I don't know where my cozy vibes went. I really created a very cozy space in my last house. It had really come along and I'm attempting to do the same here. But boy, have we had a setback. Between the grandbaby, between COVID, not COVID, between the move, I'm just not happy in my space, y'all. Something's gotta change. There's just things that I notice now. I've been in this bedroom for five days and it's just not the cozy space that it needs to be. I don't know if I'll be here another five months, another seven months, um, but for the time that I'm here, I need to be able to relax. I need to be able to rest and I need for my space to be cozy. But I feel stuck. And I know a lot of us feel stuck. And you know why I feel stuck? I feel stuck because of perfectionism. And I don't care what anybody tells you, being a perfectionist, there's nothing soft about that. It is something that I have struggled with my entire life. And I'm ready to talk about it in 2023. If you've been here for a minute, then you have seen the old house, the house that we just sold. That house, that was my baby. I loved that house. I lived there for nine years. And in nine years, it went through several iterations. So it makes sense that it was very close to being perfect <laughs> by the time I left it, at least decor wise. But it took time. It took time. It took planning. It took a lot of work. And not to toot my own horn in any way. It was stunning. I loved my home. And I felt good in it. And once it was all done, it was a blessing. But getting to that point, oh, that was stressful. That was stressful because I always got in my own way. I'm actually not OCD in any shape or form, but I am a perfectionist and there is a difference. People assume that perfectionists are always very neat and tidy, always very clean, that nothing is ever out of place, that they always have their systems in place and that it's natural. That cannot be further from the truth. In fact, a lot of perfectionists are naturally very messy people. <laughs> and we struggle to get things in order. When we do things, when we're on, when we're taking care of the things that we need to take care of, we do them with precision. We're really good at it. But it's doing them that's the problem. For a perfectionist, if it looks too overwhelming, it's easier to not do it than to not do it perfectly. I'm going to say that a different way. If I can't do it perfectly, I don't want to do it at all. So it either doesn't get done at all or it piles up and becomes a bigger problem than it could have been if you had just tackled it early on. It could be the reason why I wash three loads of clothes before I've actually folded up and put away one. By the way, that's my husband's side of the closet. It's relatively very neat. We haven't had to share a closet in nine years, so I'm driving him nuts right now. These are my things. I don't really have a place to put everything. By the way, I just got this sweater, you guys, because guess who's getting ready to revamp her capsule wardrobe? That's coming in another video. But... Let me get back to it. But before I do that, <laughs> let me show you what my dear friend got me. Oh my gosh, I am loving this green Marc Jacobs bag. I This was a total shock. It is so cute. I'm all about the Bottega green. It's, and it kind of represents how I'm going to start incorporating color into my wardrobe. But we'll get into that in future videos. Right now, let me get back to the whole perfectionism conversation. But as I was saying, I don't really have a place to put everything. Obviously, we have things in storage, so our entire wardrobe is not here. But one of the things that I wanted to do while I was in this space before we move into our new house is I wanted to corral my wardrobe to get things in order to not take the clutter that I've been living with um, to my new place. And while I thought that I really had a handle on the whole perfectionism 
thing because y'all, I have been dealing with this my entire life and um, I have found ways to overcome it. Um, it usually takes a lot of positive self-talk and a lot of um, grace, giving myself grace. But sometimes when you get sick, and I guess this this illness that I'm having right now is a blessing and a curse because unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, it is making me take stock and it is letting me know that perfectionism will always be with me. It is something that I struggle with quite a bit. And I can't, in all honesty, show you guys the good and the beautiful and the stunning and not show you the other side of it and not show you what I go through, the process that I go through, the struggles that I go through to get to the other side. Don't get it twisted. I'm going to always opt for a softer life. I'm going to always opt for the beautiful thing. I'm going to always look for the luxurious thing and have the best that I can afford around me and have the best experiences But getting to that place, if, you know, I'm truly sharing my experience, I have to share both sides of it. And it's not necessarily a struggle in the sense that I'm fighting and clawing to be the woman that I want to be. It's more or less that it's more or less the idea that we all have crosses to bear. We all have mountains to climb. We all have personality traits and flaws that we have to overcome in order to achieve the life that we want to live. We all do, no matter if you go out and you decide you want to own several businesses and work all the time and hustle hard, or if you've decided that you want to be kept and have someone take care of you we all still have to struggle with who we are on the inside. And sometimes that affects who we are on the outside. I can't, in all honesty, tell women, hey, you know, try very hard to live softly. Try very hard to live in your feminine. Slow down, you know, be a little more minimal, you know, be kinder to yourself. If I didn't show you how I got that way or how I am becoming more that way. We don't become who we want to be overnight. And we certainly don't become who we want to be through osmosis. It's a funny thing, though, because I went downstairs yesterday and my Christmas decorations are still up. It is definitely the 10th of January (laughs) as of this filming. And I still have Christmas decorations up. And that's the other part of perfectionism that a lot of people don't know. When you don't do it right, when you don't get things done, you beat yourself up. So one of the things that I have to regroup, one of the things that I have to to go back in and start to dig deeper is giving myself grace. We have to give ourselves grace. It doesn't matter that my Christmas decorations are still up, obviously. It doesn't matter that my room is still a mess. And I would say it doesn't matter because nobody's going to see it unless I show it to them. But that's not even the case. It doesn't matter in the big scheme of things because no one should ever feel pressure internal or external to live a perfect life. And just to add a little humor here, is it just me or does it look like that mouse is judging me? (laughs) I'm totally kidding. But honestly, that's what I thought when I was filming this. I have known that I... I'm a perfectionist for a while now, so it's something that I have been working on continuously. And um, I just wanted to share with you some of the things or signs to look out for, because maybe you might also suffer from perfectionism or you know someone who does and you don't understand them. Um, the first thing is everyone should be perfect. That is not something that I really struggle with because I really... I'm very hyper aware of how imperfect I am, how I am flawed. And so that I've 
pretty much as an adult anyway, I've always given grace to people who are flawed. Not carte blanche to treat me any way they want to treat me, but I understand that no one's perfect. Um, struggle to complete tasks. That is something that I do really struggle with and I want to share. Um, we t- tend to believe the mistakes are character flaws and I do struggle with that. Like something is wrong with me if I make a mistake. Well, we all make mistakes. That's not even logical thinking. Um, and we mask our flaws. That's one of the reasons why I'm filming this video today because I, I've i never been one to make it seem as though my life is just 100% perfect. I usually try to say that at least once a video. But sometimes when you only see the pretty stuff, you think that that's all there is. And then avoiding tasks or avoidance for fear, fear of failure. Um, that's what I was talking about in the beginning. It's easier to just let something go than to do it and not do it perfectly. And there are other signs as well, and it can take a toll on you. If you're never satisfied, if you feel like no achievement is ever good enough, like nothing you do is good enough, um, it can make you have a distorted sense of self-worth because you tie your self-worth to things that you accomplish. Instead of deriving your self-worth from simply being who you are. I did a quick Google search on books on perfectionism because frankly, you guys, I need a refresher and some surprising things came up. I found a few books that I think I want to add to my 2023 reading list, one of which is The Mountain Is You, which is actually a book that I've been meaning to read. So it's funny that it's one of the books that pops up when you look for books about perfectionism. Another book that popped out to me was A Gentle Reminder. This one has really good reviews. And I don't know if it's as much about perfectionism as it is about giving yourself grace. I did not know that Brene Brown had a book on imperfection specifically about that. That's very interesting on perfection, but using the term imperfection. Um, I've never read a Brene Brown book. I've only watched her give talks. So maybe this one would be a good one for a reading blog. Another book that stood out to me, The Perfectionist's Guide to Losing Control. It seemed interesting. It won't be released until later on this month, but I think I might check it out. And I may crack open Greg McEwen's book, Effortless. I am a big fan of his book, Essentialism. I have recommended it to several people. My husband read it. He loved it. And he actually bought this book after he read Essentialism. Essentialism is wonderful. A full summary of essentialism is simply having less but better things. I mean, it's that simple. It's a book about minimalism, but it's really a book about what's essential. Hence the name essentialism. This is effortless. And um, I'll just read a little bit of the inside of the dust jacket. Um, there was a particular... Ah, here it is. As high achievers, we've been conditioned to believe that the path to success is paved with relentless work. That if we want to overachieve, we have to overexert, overthink, and overdo. That if we aren't perpetually exhausted, we're not doing enough. What I like about how this book sounds is that it's helping someone who focuses so much on details and who gets overwhelmed because there's so many moving parts. It's really helping you to focus on what is truly important. And that is literally what the tagline says, make it easier to do what matters most. So I think I'm going to start this book as well because um, I just, <laughs> because I just want to get into some good habits and to not beat myself up over um, Things that may or may not get done.
believe that what happens during this time of the year, everyone is starting new, they're starting fresh, making resolutions, resetting. And there is this imaginary pressure to be doing something, be doing something big, you know? If there's one thing that I have learned that I could pass on over the last three years since 2020, you know, bringing in 2021 after having had a major surgery and losing my sister, bringing in 2022 and my mother-in-law ended up passing. There's no rush to start the year. There's no rush to be perfect for the new year to set all the goals. We should be constantly setting little goals. We should be setting soft goals. One of those is just to be kinder to ourselves. I think that I think that sometimes there's just so much pressure to be doing something new and to be sharing our vision boards and all of the things that we have going on, you know, I guess to flex. I don't know why. There's so much pressure out there that we lose sight sometimes of what's really important. And what's really important is, are we taking care of ourselves? Are we healthy? Are we happy? Are our loved ones happy? Are they okay? Are we okay? I couldn't come into the new year with a bang because I came into the new year sick. So there you go. That was a lot, you guys. And your sister is tired. <laughs> but you know what? The whole point is to just start. I know one of the tenets of living a soft life is that you you ask for help. And I could get someone to come in here and do those things for me. I could. And, you know, at some point, I may. I know when I move into the new house, um, it's a larger space. And I am more than likely going to have someone come in periodically. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you have the means... Or if you if you can trade tasks with a friend, you know, maybe you have a friend who loves to vacuum. Maybe you like doing dishes and you guys are close enough where, you know, she can come to your house or he can come to your house and vacuum and you can go to their house and you can do their dishes. You know, that's a way of living a soft life on a budget or being soft on a budget. And I'm saying all that to say we don't have to do these things alone. And I'm reminding myself too, you know, we don't have to do these things by ourselves. Um, this week would probably be a good week to have someone come in and just do a thorough cleaning of the house. And I'm probably going to talk to my husband about it. It feels weird being in a rental and doing that, but I don't know why. And I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments that I'm just full of the horse pucky. <laughs> Um, because this was, this was a rough start to the year and, um, but a necessary one. So I have started, I'm going to look into those books that I talked about and, um, I'm going to continue to get well. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it slow. It doesn't have to be perfect, but y'all I'm sick of those green sheets. So I will be purchasing some new bedding here very shortly. Um, just a heads up. So there will be a transformation of that room. I am going to, um, I'm going to have an oasis, even if I am here for just another four or five months or however long it's going to be. You know, we're looking at summertime moving. I'll just pick up the whole oasis and carry it to the new house. I hope that this video resonates with you all. And, um, this is how I'm doing 2023. I'm coming into 2023 real. Um, not that I wasn't real before because that is definitely my lifestyle most of the time. It was a lifestyle that was very curated and is very curated and will continue to be because I like being surrounded by beautiful things. I like being surrounded by cleanliness. Um, I like traveling and all the things that I've shown you here that is also me. And the wonderful thing about all of this is that people are not one dimensional. We are multifaceted and we are not perfect. We have flaws. And 
we need to start seeing each other that way. When we see someone showing their beautiful home, that doesn't mean that they don't have some sort of illness you don't know about or some sort of turmoil you don't know about, you know, and we need to start being real about that because the internet can be very mean and people can be very mean behind keyboards and very judgmental. And I find that the most judgmental people are the ones with the biggest flaws. They're the ones with the most to hide. So if they deflect and they, they, you know, point the finger at other people, nobody's looking at them. The people who are, who aren't out here judging people, the people who aren't out here, um, saying mean things, you know, on the keyboards, those are probably the ones who are the most justified. Those are probably the ones who have room to talk. They're not out here judging people. They're out here treating people kindly. So um, keep in mind that I am on the internet. I am sharing with you on the internet. Just, you know, those of you who do follow me and who do enjoy it here, um, there are also people who they're trolls or they're miserable in their lives and they don't want to see people have decent lives. Some people will probably look at my video today and just rejoice in the fact that, you know, oh my God, her life isn't perfect or oh my God, you know, look at, look at her mess, you know, look at my mess. If it makes you feel better, you know, to see that I can be messy, okay, because God's going to bless me either way. That's just the way life works. <laughs> and the more you send, the more people send that energy to you, negative or positive, they're thinking about you. They're putting, to me, they're putting you on God's radar. And he's looking down and he's like, I'm going to bless you, child, for just doing what I told you to do. And this is what I'm feeling led to do. So this is what I'm doing. And I hope that it resonates with you guys. And, you know, I don't ever have any problems showing you guys behind the scenes. Um, but I know I want to also be a soft place for people to land to. I think there's enough bad news on the internet. There's enough ugliness on the internet. There's enough vitriol on the internet where I don't need to be putting that out too. But at the same time, if I can help someone, if I could let you know too, like if I can show you like, hey, started from the bottom, now we here. Like, because that's what's helped me. The people that I watch on the internet, and I may do a whole video about that. The people that I choose to watch, these are people that I've been watching for a long period of time and I've seen them living in one bedroom flats or apartments and now they're they're mortgage free you know and I've watched them grow and I'm proud of them and um that's what I choose to watch those are the things that I choose to watch I try to fill my head and my internet and my browser with as much positivity as possible um and um I hope that I'm conveying that to you guys as well too much activity makes me kind of dizzy and tired. And I'm dehydrated too. I haven't drank enough water, y'all. So everything is dry. That's why you saw me moisturizing my face in this video. <laughs> anyway, I hope this helps someone. I hope this helps someone. I just send you all many blessings and a happy new year if I haven't said it yet. Because, you know, it's been a crazy, it's we're 10 days in and a lot has happened. And even things that I can't really share right now have happened. I've already lost a family member this year too. And I don't say that because I want sympathy. I'm just saying like, we are up against a lot in this world and to still be able to smile, to still be able to find joy and laughter, like that is what makes it all worth it. So I just pray the best for all of you and happy new year guys. And watch the book content too. I put the book content on there because like I said, we're multifaceted people and I want to show you as much of my soft life as I can and books and art and um, music too, actually. Um, I don't share a lot here or share anything about my about music here. Not that I play an instrument or anything, but music is a big part of our lives too. I mean, the arts in general are a big part of our lives and home decor and all those things, like all of that makes a well-rounded woman. So I want to share all of that with you. And going forth, I want to do playlists so that, you know, you can access the things that you're interested in or you can access all of it. Um, the newsletter is still up. I am about to set up the paid portion of the newsletter. So a heads up on that, I'll be working on that. I feel really good right now. I'm sitting in the sun. It feels amazing. I know I need some vitamin D and I know I need to stop rambling. So I'm going to go now. Thank you all so much for watching. And I hate to love you and leave you, but I got to go. But I'll see you in the next one.